Hey everyone, in this video we are going to configure um, ICE to support TLS authentication utilizing the SSID ICE radius that we configured in the previous video. So as you can see here, we have our employee AD users MS CHAP and computers MS CHAP rules. We're going to duplicate these, but we're going to change the actual EAP authentication to EAP TLS. And then we're going to go ahead and in the client machine, we're going to pre-configure uh, the SSID to configure using the certificate. So let's go ahead and duplicate above. Let's remove this MS CHAP and do EAP TLS. And then Let's change this from network access EAP authentication equals EAP MS chap to EAP TLS. And then let's do the same for computers. So let's go ahead and duplicate above. And then let's remove this. And then let's change this rule from EAP TLS or EAP MS chap to EAP TLS. Notice we're still using PEEP to tunnel that traffic. And then let's actually create a new um, rule. And let's call it TLS users. So typically you have like a, a couple different authorization profiles you might end up using. Um, I like to create them and make them specific just so that you can kind of follow the authentication when you're troubleshooting. So in this uh, scenario, we're still going to want to add filter ID and one thing that I, I, you can click through and you can look for the, the, the AV pair you want to use, or you could just type it in up here. Usually easier to type in. Um, takes it a second, but you're not hunting through all the menus to try and find the proper one. So let's just do the same. Let's use employee. And then let's go ahead and make sure everything else looks good and click save. All right, and this will take just a second. And then we're going to change the other rule as well to utilize the TLS users rule. This might take longer than I thought. There we go. So TLS users is selected. Let's go ahead and change the other TLS, ETLS authentication. And standard. And let's do TLS users. Okay, let's click save here. This might take another minute or two. While we're waiting, let's go ahead and pre-configure an SSID. So to do so, it's kind of a pain, but uh, we can go to control panel. This is actually a lot easier to use through group policies and Active Directory. Um, that's not part of this video series, but uh, if you are looking for ways to do it in group policy, there's plenty of documents uh, online to do so. But for now, let's just go ahead and say we're just gonna be testing locally. So let's go to Network and Sharing Center, and then set up a new connection or network. If you notice here, we have a couple different things, but let's manually connect to a wireless network. Let's name it, it is ICE Radius. The security type is going to be WPA2 Enterprise. We want to start the connection automatically, and let's click Next. So do not click Close, let's change the connection settings. This is going to be very important to do. We click on Security. Notice here we have Microsoft Protected EAP. That's fine because we do want to use a peak tunnel. But let's go ahead and click Settings here. So we want to leave Verify the Server's Identity by validating the certificate checked. If we don't check any of them in here, it will use this entire table. If you really wanted to, you could be very specific and use the on that DCCA or whichever your root CA or subordinate CA is. Um, it's a very good idea to do so because if someone was trying to perform a honeypot of some sort, they could easily spin up their own radius server and try and grab your credentials and you know you don't want that at all. So let's go ahead and choose smart card or other certificate. We can click continue here and we could also say you know trusted root certificate authorities. We could also put another check mark there um, and then click OK. Um, there's a couple other things we could check in here, but for now, we're just going to keep clicking OK. And then one more setting. So let's go to Advanced Settings. And then we can do Computer Authentication. Let's do User or Computer. And this will allow us to authenticate as a user when we're logged in. 
When we log off, it'll authenticate as a computer. So click OK, and then OK, and then close. Hopefully it will work the first time. It's usually the fun part. So if we click here, let's click ice radius and click connect. Can't connect. I probably locked it down so much. Let's look. So we tried to log in as alex at alnet.us. Let's look at the config. I'll look at the, the details. OK. Unknown CA in client certificate chain. That is totally not possible. Unless, actually, this is an old certificate. Crap. This absolutely is. So let me go ahead and look at my, let's look at my uh, VM here real quick. And let's launch MMC. And then let's go ahead and add, remove snap in. Let's do certificates. Let's use my user account because that's the one that we have issues with initially. Drop this down and check personal and certificates. And here we do have my username. And let's look at this. So this was issued today because I did just join it to the domain. So this shouldn't be an issue from a certificate standpoint. Well, let's see, everything is looking good here. Certificate path looks pretty darn good. Um, cancel, leave that available. Let's see. Wait, let's set up, let's set this uh, SSID up again and make sure I didn't select something improperly. So, first we're going to remove the SSID and manage no networks. Forget. And let's try this again. So manually connect to a wireless network. Let's use ICE radius again, WPA2 enterprise. Instead of selecting my um, CA, let's just go ahead and select, um, or not select any of the CAs and just validate that certificate. Start this connection automatically. Let's go to security. We'll still use protected EAP. Um, not select anything in here. We want to use a certificate for the inner method for authentication. And that looks good. We could choose, let's do that actually. It might have been because I didn't select some of the stuff in here. But I don't remember having an intermediate, intermediate CA, so this could be interesting. Let's go ahead and just unselect that. And then let's see, everything looks good. Click OK. Let's click Advanced again. User or computer. Everything looks good there. OK. Let's go ahead and click Close. Let's try to authenticate again. All right. Still failing. Well, that's weird. So what do we have going on here? Let's look at certificates. So my system certificate should still be the certificate signed by that certificate authority. If we go to trusted certificates, that should be it. Unless I'm missing a certificate authority, but I do not remember building a subordinate CA at all. So let's go ahead and click edit here and make sure that we're trusting for what we need. Oh, I totally missed this. I thought it just said trust for syslog. So let's go ahead and trust for client authentication as well. And then, since that's done, we should be able to try this again. So let's connect. Looks like it's identifying and connected. Oh, that was fun. It's always fun making mistakes on video while you're recording. So as you can see here, now we matched as the TLS user's authorization um, policy. And if we click on that, we can actually see 
um, the information here. So if you look here, we're still authenticating as my user account, but this time instead we're using PPTLS. And if we scroll down, we can see some more information, such as we're still, still sending back employee as the filter ID. You could, in other situations, let's say you're migrating over to a certificate-based authentication environment, and you want to try and stop users from using EPMS CHAP, or maybe you want to let them use EPMS CHAP, but want to give them different access privileges, maybe different firewall rules. You could change the policy and change this filter ID on like the EPMS CHAP response and maybe say employee limited and take away rules. Um, so now that we've authenticated as a user, let's go ahead and check one more thing because I don't want to make any more mistakes, at least in this video. Let's go ahead and add certificates again and let's look at my computer account and make sure it does have a certificate because that would be funny if it didn't. So personal certificates, yes, so the machine does have a certificate as well. So let's go ahead and sign out. And then let's just watch the live logs here. So there we go. So as you can see here, if I refresh again, here's my authentication and my session starting for my machine. So if I click on this one right here, we should see that now I'm matching the employee AD computers, EPTLS. And from here, we're able to see that I'm logging in as my user or my machine account. Notice it does not have host slash machine account. It has a username. Um, and we can also see that we match the EPTLS profile. Um, and oops, we can also see we also sent back that employee filter ID. So that is more or less EPTLS authentication in a nutshell. One thing to keep in mind is I have built in Active Directory um, some group policies to auto-enroll my devices, um, which was what allowed me to have certificates already built on, uh, on my machine prior to this, uh, this configuration. So anyway, I hope this was informative for you, and I thank you for viewing.